Happy Tuesday, everyone. We got a fun workout for you guys. We got a little ascending ladder coming at you. But before we get to the ladder, let's talk about our warm up. Our warm up is going to consist of a good morning of five reps, any stance you'd like, or a mix and match of that wide sumo, regular squat, and or a narrow stance. So, whatever you want to do there, just to get those hips ready for action. After that, we have three to five windmills per side, a narrow squat of three. Uh, at a 3 one, 3 tempo, so really just working on opening up the ankles and the hips, getting that body ready to go. And then I'm gonna take down some calf raises for 30 seconds, start priming up those feet, priming up those ankles, and then we have our ankle pop at the end of 10 to 20 seconds to get some dynamic kind of life into those ankles as well. So a little bit more static into some more dynamic. Two rounds through that just to get a nice once over for the body. We're gonna move into a little bit more specific movement with some explosive skill work. Standing lunge of three per side, single leg RDL for three to five a side, single leg RDL jump, 20 seconds per side, and then some butt kicks, 20 seconds of just steady flow. Two rounds of that work set, and then you're gonna continue on, kind of moving into a practice round, maybe adding in perhaps what you plan on using for your run or that, that uh, cardio piece. Our work set today is a 15 minute AMRAP. So we have 15 minutes. I know it seems like a long time for two movements, but one of them is going to go up. So what we have is a run of 200 meters, and then you're gonna take down 16 alternating lunges. In brackets, I have front rack or overhead. So if you'd like to change that around, load that lunge into a specific position with that dumbbell, uh, you can, or you can just do a regular lunge, or there'll be other options on the workout description for that lunge substitution. Now, each round, you will ascend your run meters by 200 meters. So the second round, you will do a 400 meter run, and then you will take down 16 alternating lunges, front rack or overhead, and then continue in that, that fashion, adding 200 meters every single time. Check the workout description, I'll have other options for that, and also working with that ascending um, ladder as well. Let's get you warmed up, let's get you ready, and have some fun today. All right, you guys, let's get you guys warmed up. Let's get our feet under our hips. We'll take the arms big and tall. We're just gonna shrug them, so we're gonna lose that neck and then we'll find it again. We'll reach it to one side, we'll come back up, we'll reach it to the other side, we'll come back up, we're gonna take it all the way down to the floor. Touching those toes, so walk up those shins, Come on down, bring the foot. We'll step back into our lizard. Nice and square in those hips. We'll take the inside hand up, and then we'll rotate over on the floor. From here, we'll come back up, plant the hand down, and we're gonna lower the back knee, pressing that hip, and then opening up to the outside. Big stretch. So we'll come back down, press the hip, open up to that outside, come back down, press the hip, and open up to that outside. Come back down, we'll straighten the back leg. Inside hand's gonna reach up, and we'll rotate. Forearm to the floor if you can, and back to the sky. Plant the hand. We'll step back into our down dog. Setting up those shoulders, we're gonna walk those heels back and forth, nice and steady. Weight up our feet. Come back into our plank, step the other foot up, nice and square in those hips, inside hand reaches, rotate, come back up, plant that hand on the floor, lower the back knee, press the hip, open up to the outside hand, plant the hand down, press the hip, back through, outside hand, and plant the hand, press the hip, back to center, Inside hand, plant that hand down, straighten the leg. Inside hand's gonna reach, rotate, forearm to the floor. Come back up, plant the hand, and step back into that down dog. Reaching those hips, walk those heels nice and slow. Good, nice and gentle, nice and slow. Back into that plank, pressing through the floor. Tiptoe those feet up. Roll ourselves up, big stretch, little reach, little reach, come down with those hands, Whew. get you guys fired up.
So if there's any extra little movements you want to take down, get yourself prepped and ready for, please do so. Pause that video, come back to me. We're going to start working on that nice top to bottom warm up to get you ready to go. All right, we're going to start our day off today with some good mornings. Five reps of good mornings. And this can be taken at a wide stance, a sumo stance, regular squat stance, or a narrow stance. So whatever is going to get those hamstrings ready for you, regardless of what stance you go. I'm just going to go in a kind of a hip width stance for these to show you today. The hinge and the body position is the same. We're going to keep our knees relatively soft. If you'd like to use kind of a hand reference for the ribs and the chest, you can. You're going to pull the hips back, giving that nice solid hinge. The knee is soft, the back is straight, and then we squeeze and stand tall. So the main focus here is we're not trying to do a forward fold and put our chest on our thighs. We're trying to get maximum engagement through that hamstring. So we draw the hip back towards the back wall, we feel those hamstrings kick on, and then we stand. Now, depending on where your feet are, will depend on how intense the sensation is in certain areas of the body. So you'll have a different, slightly different feel depending on how wide or narrow your feet are. So keeping that in mind, we want to make sure that you're giving yourself what you need for yourself today. And if you're like, I really don't know what I need today, there's nothing wrong with kind of going through each of those stances to see which one resonates best with you today. So play with them, have fun, make them yours. Make sure we're focusing on that good hinge, keeping that back super strong. Our next exercise is gonna to come to a, a sumo stance. We're gonna get our feet out nice and soft, toes slightly turned out. And we're gonna press one arm up into that overhead position with that armpit towards the front. So we have that nice set shoulder. We're pressing down with one hand. We're gonna pull the hips back and soften the knees as we rotate at that low rib. So we're really focusing on that good rotation with that strong overhead position. So the shoulder is isolated and part of our torso. So as I pull back, I rotate at that low rib and that is what shifts the shoulder into a different position. It's not the shoulder moving on its own. We're isolating that por portion of our body and then rotating at that low rib. So really focus on that good shoulder position. Don't worry if you touch the floor or not. I want you to focus primarily on reaching for the ground and pressing that hand up to the sky. After that, we're gonna come pretty narrow and we're gonna work on our narrow squat. So our narrow squat is our feet about our hip to shoulder width. We bring our feet in to whatever we feel comfortable with and that could change day to day. We haven't really done too many squats yet today, so it might be a little wider um, in comparison to previous days or previous kind of sets in what we've done in the, in the past. But regardless of where our feet are, we want to keep that nice, solid, tall position, glutes tight, ribs set, hips going towards the heels as we focus on that good squat mechanics. So regardless of our positioning of our feet, our squat mechanics stay the same. Feet stay flat, hips go to the heels, chest stays tall, and we want to make sure our weight is through our midfoot. So we're working at a pretty slow tempo. So it gives us a really good chance to kind of make sure all those key points are taken care of and we're working through good range of motion. From there, we're gonna stay in that hip width stance, toes point straight ahead. We're gonna squeeze the glutes, set the ribs, and we're gonna work on pushing into those toes and then lowering down. So you don't have to go slow with these, but if you'd like to do a little pause at the top and a nice eccentric down, you're more than welcome to because it's really nice way to work on balance and just waking up our feet. Regardless of how we take these down though, we want to make sure we're trying to stay balanced between the big toe and the pinky toe so we're not rolling out to the outside of the ankle. We're keeping that foot nice and stable. Because once we're done our 30 seconds of calf raises, we're going to move into our ankle pop or ankle pump. So we have 10 to 20 seconds of this. The ankle pump is just a little quicker, more dynamic, elastic version of the ankle pop. So I set up like I'm holding a skipping rope and I push into those toes and I work on that nice smooth bounce and kind of pump of the feet as I work on my range, working on that nice relaxed foot. The ankle pop, I get some height. So I work on that nice smooth jump. So I'm learning about some impact, 
trying to work on keeping my feet and knees relaxed so it's a little bit more impact on the body or the pump than just working on no jump but that nice smooth flow of the foot. We still need that foot to be relaxed, those knees in a good position, but we want to make sure we're not leaving the ground if we're not comfortable with that just yet. You're going to hit that anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds, and then we're going to take that back to the top to start with those good mornings again. So as a quick recap, we have a good morning of five reps. Any stance you'd like to play with or combination of stances, windmill, three to five aside, narrow squat of three at a three, one, three tempo, calf raise of 30 seconds, slow, pause, eccentric, whatever you want, ankle pop or pump of 10 to 20 seconds, two rounds, get that body primed, because we're gonna come at you with some skill work and some explosiveness in some jumping. So pause the video, take that down, get yourself prepped, Come back and join me for our next phase of warm-up. Our next phase of warm-up, we're gonna start warming up that lunge. So we're gonna start off with a standing lunge. So I'm gonna get my feet in a squat stance, so it's a little wider. I'm gonna step one foot forward, one foot back. So I'm nice and square in those hips. My feet have about a 50-50 kind of balance between the two, and I'm nice and upright and vertical. From here, I'm gonna try and keep that knee stacked over top of the heel as I lower down towards the floor as deep as I feel comfortable. I come back up to that nice 50-50 balance, lowering down, focusing on that good positioning, that good control. So you can add in an eccentric to that, a three second lower, that's what I like to play with when I work on that to warm up, because it just gives us that opportunity to really work on control and range of motion. We want to try and keep our head, hip, and knee all kind of in alignment with each other so we're nice and stacked and vertical. And that lead leg is over top of the heel. A very common kind of issue with this is as we start to lower, we start to come forward instead of down. So we're still keeping 50-50 weight to our feet, but we need to think about that back leg just a little bit more. Now, after that, we're going to continue priming up our hamstrings with a single leg RDL. We're going to get ourselves set up in a hip width stance. Our toe is going to be down. Hips are nice and square, and my body's facing straight ahead. You can load this or not, it's up to you. But if you don't want to, you just want to charge the hamstring, that's fine. You can set the hands like we're holding a dumbbell or two, and draw the hips back, just like our good morning, except we're on that single leg. And then we stand tall. So we're really focusing on that hinge from the hip crease, isolating the head to the hip as one piece, drawing the hip back with that soft knee and that good hamstring engagement as we stand. Resetting and setting those hips every single rep so that they're square the entire time. So very, very important. So I want you to keep track of those hips so that if you feel that rotation happening, you want to really focus on that hip staying square to the floor the entire time. From that RDL, we're going to do three to five per side. Again, I like to do that with an eccentric, but it's not necessary, but I do like to add that in just to prime up the hamstring a bit and work on control. We're going to move into a single leg RDL jump. So what that's going to entail is one of three things. We're going to pick our balancing leg. The leg that is going back is the arm that is going forward. So we're going to load this leg the same every time. From there, we have three variations. One, we're going to work on control and working on building the shape of that high knee. And then we're going to come back through, reaching, loading, coming up into that nice shape of what we want to do, but in a very controlled manner. The next variation, we're going to use that back leg as a chance to build some momentum into a little lift. So we're not actually coming off the ground yet, but we load the leg the same way. We come up, and that leg coming through gives us that little pull onto the toe, and then we just come back down. Trying to focus our attention on up, not forward, side, or back, but taking that momentum upwards. Our last variation, same thing, except we follow through with the ankle and get a little pop. So we pull and load the leg, we bring that back leg through, and we just finish that momentum with that bottom leg and that little pop with the ankle. Most of the work is coming from that leg coming through, lifting, but the foot just finishes. 
So you're not gonna get a crazy amount of height, but I want you guys to really focus on that good smooth flow to engagement as we try and bring the upper body, the lower body together with that kind of unilateral energy and rotation. So it's a nice way to practice. You have 20 seconds per side to practice that drill. Just for coordination, single leg strength and control, it's a great way to work on power and get you prepped for what's to come with the run. After that, we have our butt kick. So our butt kick, again, is gonna be working on our pose method. Our hands are gonna be kind of at the 90, or our elbows are at the 90 like we're running, but we're gonna work on pulling that foot up underneath of the glute so that we get this kind of figure four position. My foot's relatively relaxed. In the beginning, it's pretty tough to relax that foot. So I want you to not so much worry about the foot right off the hop as is the position of the knee and the position of the foot. And we're gonna take it back and forth working on pulling with the hamstring as we pull that foot straight up underneath of the glute. And that's gonna keep that nice solid engagement through the hamstring and that power coming through that back leg of the body. Now, you can take this at a marching speed, you can take it at a walking speed, and or jogging sprinting speed. So it all depends on where you're at in the warm up, where you're at with this drill, Right? But again, we're trying to keep the heel underneath, or the foot underneath the glute, regardless of the speed that we're doing. So a couple key factors, the standing march, knee comes up, foot comes to the front, we're engaging our quad and hip. Butt kick, pose style, we're engaging our hamstring, and the knee goes slightly forward. So just check those things out for yourselves, make sure that we're hitting that proper position so that we're practicing that cool, solid run technique. Now, as a quick recap, we have a standing lunge of three per side, stand, or sorry, single leg RDL, three to five per side, single leg RDL jump, 20 seconds of practice per side, and 20 seconds of butt kicks. Two rounds of that, or one, depending on how, you, how you're feeling with that, then we're gonna move into a practice round, where we're gonna start inputting some movements that we're gonna need to use in our work. So pause the video, take down that skill work, come back, we're gonna rock that nice skill work and get you guys ready to go. So we've worked on some skill work, we're getting primed and ready, now it's time to work on some practice rounds to get our heart rate up and get ourselves fired up. So for this, what I have, I'll put this on the workout description, you're gonna input what you're gonna do for your run or your run variation in this and you're gonna hit it for a smaller stint just to get that feel, that, that flow going. And then you're gonna practice the lunge variation that you're gonna use. So in our workout today, we have 16 alternating lunges. You can do our standing lunge drill, eight per side, loaded or unloaded, or you can work on an unloaded lunge for 16 total count, all right, forward or back, all right, it's up to you, depending on what lunge is best set for your body or feels the best for higher volumes or you can load the lunge today. So if you'd like to load the lunge, it's gonna be a little slower. You can do with one or two dumbbells. You can hold the dumbbell or dumbbells to the side and you can work on eight with the dumbbell on one side, all right, and then the other eight on the other side. You can work on the front rack position, same idea, eight and eight, but you're alternating your feet back and forth, keep that in mind. Or you can do an overhead position. The overhead position being the more challenging position in terms of control, I would highly suggest only going overhead if you've done them before in workouts because it does require a ton of shoulder mobility and a ton of hip mobility and control because we need to keep that hand, shoulder, hip, knee all in alignment so that we can keep that dumbbell situated over top of the body. So we really need to make sure that we're strong there. Now, if you're looking at this going, I've done overhead lunges before, but I don't know about two, just do one, because that is gonna give you a little extra help in terms of maintaining position, besides two dumbbells overhead, which requires a ton of mobility in the shoulder. So please keep that in mind. If you'd like to play with the overhead lunge, keep the load light and maybe stick with one dumbbell and do eight alternating lunges on one side with the dumbbell, and then eight on the other side. 
So keep that in mind. You can play with this lunge, make it yours, make it challenging, have some fun. I'd even say too, if you want to goblet lunge it too, you're more than welcome to. So experiment, find the lunge that suits you best today. It's a very straightforward workout in terms of movements. We have a run or run option and some sort of lunge variation. Check the workout description. We'll make sure that you're good to go with that and you have good options for that lunge, but it's gonna be a good time. As a recap of the workout, you have 15 minutes. You are going to run 200 meters or a run equivalent. Then you will do 16 alternating lunges of whatever variation you would like. Then the next round, you will do a 400 meter run, 16 lunges, 600 meter run, 16 lunges, 800 meter run, and so on and so forth until the 15 minutes is done. So we're not changing the lunge reps, we're just adding some run distance. So have some fun with this one today, you guys. I hope you enjoy it. It's gonna be a gasser, it's gonna be fun. I really like this workout. I did this one a way back whenever it was still not so nice outside. And I played around with this one with a row. Um, so that was a lot of fun in terms of building that row. So I hope you guys enjoy it with the run or whatever variation you guys choose for that run variation. Have fun today, work for quality, and we're gonna come at you this week with some really fun stuff. So I hope you enjoy, buckle up, it's gonna be a good time. Bye you guys.